today our topic is deflection of beams and shafts. As far as the concept of deflection of beams and shafts is concerned, what we are going to read, what we are going to understand in this chapter, we are going to study the concept of deflection of beams. As far as the deflection of beams is concerned, what do we mean by the deflection of beams? We know what are beams. As far as the beams are concerned, beams are the structural elements which are subjected to loads perpendicular to their axis, longitudinal axis. As far as the direction of the load is concerned, this is a beam for us. Okay, we say this is end A of the beam. This is end B of the beam. At end A, we have one support. At end B, we have another support. And supports A and B offer reactions to the beam. We call that as reaction at end A. And we say reaction at end B. Okay. The length of the beam is the distance between A and B, what we call as the span of the beam. The span of the beam is L. Now, as far as this beam is concerned, whose span is L, this beam may be having a pin support at end A and a roller support at end B. It may be having a fixed support at end A and it may be free at end B. So it can we can have different conditions of supporting the beams. Now, as far as a beam is concerned, the beam is always supported. It has supports at the bottom and the beam is subjected to the loads and the loads are in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the beam. If we look, where is the axis of the beam? We will say, this is the axis of the beam. The axis of the beam is, this is the axis of the beam. This is the axis of the beam. Now, the loads that are applied over the beam are in a direction, are, at, are in a direction sometimes perpendicular to the beam, perpendicular to the axis of the beam, we call as a longitudinal axis of the beam. Sometimes they are at some angle. Sometimes the loads are at some angle, okay? They can be at different angles. So as far as the beam is concerned, the beam's tendency should be to withstand these loads, okay? Now, if we look at the beam, when a beam is subjected to loads, what happens to the beam? The beam starts what you call as bending, okay? You can, in ordinary language, you can say the beam bends. Initially, before the application of the load, before the beam is subjected to any sort of load, the axis of the beam is a straight line, okay? It is straight. Now, as soon as the beam is subjected to loads, as soon as the beam is loaded, you subject your beam to loads, any sort of loading condition, what happens to the axis? The axis of the beam now starts bending, okay? The beam undergoes the bend, okay? This bending of the beam is called, this we call as, we say the beam has, the beam has deflected. The beam is, the beam has undergone deflection, okay? We say the beam has undergone deflection. This is what we call as deflection. And you have seen, uh, the, you are well acquainted with the concept of the deflection, okay? If you say, for example, if you, uh, you keep, you take eraser one, okay? And take another eraser, eraser two. On these erasers, you keep a scale on these erasers, okay? Keep, put a scale on the erasers, okay? Keep a scale on the erasers and apply a force. Apply force on the scale, apply force on the scale with your thumb, okay? As you apply the force on the scale with your thumb, you will find that the scale will bend, okay? It will undergo the bend. This bending of the scale is a typical example of what we call as, this is what we call as deflection, okay? This is, we say, the scale has undergone deflection. In the same way, the beam, once the beam is loaded, the beam undergoes deflection. Now see, as far as the deflection is concerned, deflection of the beam is an important property. Deflection of the beam is to be understood properly, okay? Though every beam undergoes deflection, we have to be very careful about the amount of deflection a beam undergoes, okay? Because you see, initially before the application of the load, the axis of the beam was straight, okay? Now as the beam is loaded, this point on the beam has now moved to this position. So it means there is a translation of the points of the beam, okay? This point was originally here, 
under the application of load this point has moved down now this point is here okay so in the same way this point has moved down so all the points of the beam which were initially on a straight line now the points have uh, moved in the form of some curve okay the points are now forming the points are forming now some curve okay the curve that is obtained after the beam is subjected to loading this we call as deflection curve it's called deflection curve okay this we call as the deflection curve okay so we say this is a deflection curve understanding the deflection curve is very very important because if the deflection in the beam is large if the deflection in the beam is large then the possibilities of failure of the beam are very very large there are more chances of the failure of the beam because say for example on this beam say for example some uh, you have a truck you have a loaded truck the loaded truck is trying to translate on this beam as a loaded truck tends to translate on this beam as a loaded truck truck tends to translate on the beam if the beam undergoes too much amount of the deflection then the possibilities of the failure or the breakage of the beam are very very large so it means whatever be the conditions there whatever the condition whatever be the conditions the deflection in the beam has to be very very small they have the, the deflection in the beam has to be within the limits we cannot have an uncontrolled deflection of the beam if there is an uncontrolled deflection of the beam then we say the beam is undergoing failure so again i repeat we had a beam we had a simply supported beam the simply supported beam is loaded as the simply supported beam is loaded it undergoes deflection and the curve of deflection is like this okay it can have varying shapes as we will see in the coming lectures it's not always this shape sometimes the shape can be sometimes it's shape depending upon the supports it has sometimes the shape can be like this sorry sometimes the shape is like this okay it can have different shapes okay based on the loading condition based on the supports that we have but essentially each point on the beam is now translating okay so we are say the point which was originally here under the influence of the load it has moved down we say the point has undergone deflection and we represent deflection by the symbol delta deflection is represented by the symbol delta if we treat this to be our x axis if we call this axis to be our x axis then look at this end look at this end the point which is very very close to the support has not deflected okay the point which is very very close that is this point look at this point the point which is close to the low close to the support has not deflected at all so we say this point is x is equal to l x is equal to zero and this point this point is x is equal to l if we say the total span of the beam is equal to l okay we have the total span of the beam is equal to l this is at x is equal to 0 this is at x is equal to l at x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 the deflection of the beam is zero there is no deflection in the beam at the support at x is equal to l the deflection of the beam is again equal to zero because the point has not translated at all but if you go if you move in the direction of the l here at this point the deflection has some value here the deflection has some other value here the deflection has some another value so it means as you can see here from the deflection curve as you translate along x axis the deflection values also change here deflection has value delta 1 here deflection has value delta 2 so on and so forth so as we are going across the curve as we are going across the along the x axis the deflection is changing so deflection varies deflection of the vary deflection of the beam varies along deflection of the beam varies along x axis deflection of the beam varies along x axis so we say it is like mathematically we say deflection is a function of x axis okay deflection is a function of x axis so finding this deflection what is the equation of this deflection what is the equation of the deflection curve okay what is the equation of the deflection curve is there uh, is 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 the is the concept that we will be understanding in this chapter so in this chapter our concept will be understanding the equation of the deflection curve how does this deflection vary along x axis and what is the maximum value of the deflection what is delta max what is the maximum value of the deflection we have to find it and we have to find the points at which the deflection values will be zero that those points are also to be uh, the, those points are also to be 
okay this is one this is what you call as deflection there is one more term associated with this chapter that is what we call as that's what we call as uh, slope these terms like in previous chapters you have been talking about uh, shear force and bending moment diagram now onwards you will be talking about deflection and slope of a beam the way we talk about shear force and bending moment diagram in the same way we are talking about deflection and slope of the beam what do we mean by the slope of the beam again let's consider let's consider a beam let's suppose we have a beam simply supported beam it is not loaded right now so its axis will be a straight line it is low it's not loaded at all these are the support reactions it is being it is being you know supported because it's important that we need to support the beam without supporting the beam the beam will not be able to withstand the load so we say let the reaction here and reaction here let's suppose the reaction at this end let we call this as reaction at end a let us call this as reaction at end b and we say this is our end a and we say this is our end b and we say the distance between end a and end b let's call this as let's call this length as length l we say this is the span of the beam okay now initially this beam before being subjected to load this beam is a this beam the axis of the beam is straight okay we represent a beam by a line and the line is actually the the the, the, the central axis of the beam okay actually the neutral axis of the beam the central axis you can take it as the central axis of the beam beam is represented by a line now let let's do one thing let's draw tangent to the beam at point a if we draw tangent to the beam at point a the tangent to the beam at point a will be in this direction okay let's draw tangent at this very point the tangent to the beam will be in this direction the tangent to the beam here will be in this direction and tangent to the beam at point b will be in this direction so if you look before the beam is subjected to loads the tangents the tangents drawn are parallel to the axis of the beam before the beam is subjected to load the tangents drawn before the beam is subjected to loads the tangents drawn are parallel to the axis of the beam the tangents drawn are parallel to the axis of the beam are parallel to the axis of the beam isn't it now subject the beam to loading load this beam now as we subject this beam to loads say for example it's being loaded by some arbitrary loads let's suppose the beam is loaded now subject the beam to loads subject it to loads different types of loading conditions okay so maybe concentrated load maybe load at some angle maybe uniformly distributed or non uniformly distributed load any type of load again what happens the beam will not the axis of the beam will not remain same a straight line the axis of the beam will now bend so the axis of the beam will be now in this form the axis of the beam will be now will take the form and the axis of the beam the deflection curve of the beam will be say for example like this for example okay the beam will now deflect because we know naturally as well as physically we see that under the loading conditions the beams do deflect okay and deflection is you know it, it it is like a property it's not the property of a beam it's like the property of a beam every beam does deflect though the deflection may be small but there is deflection okay now see what has happened uh, we have we have drawn we have applied loads on the beam and the beam has undergone the deflection okay now draw the tangent at point a okay as we draw the tangent at point a now the tangent which will which has to be parallel which has to be parallel to the curve the tangent will be now in this direction draw tangent at this very point the tangent to the curve will be in this direction draw tangent at this very point the tangent will be in this direction draw tangent at this very point it will be in this direction because tangent has to be parallel to the curve so if you see now what has happened to the tangents initially the tangents were parallel to the axis of the curve yeah so parallel to the axis of the beam now what has happened the tangents have rotated the tangent which was initially in this direction now the same tangent on the deflected curve has rotated by this much amount by this much angle we call this as we call this as theta okay in the same way initially this tangent at this point was parallel to the beam now it has 
now it has you know it has it, it's at some angle it's at the angle described is this much so we say the deflection sorry let's call this angle as theta prime similarly you see what has happened to the tangents the tangents have undergone the angular motion okay the tan of this theta the tan of theta at a given point the tangent of this theta is what we call as the slope we say this is the slope this is slope of the this is slope of the deflection curve okay this is slope of the deflection curve okay this is what we call as this is slope of the deflection curve so what we have we have two things associated with the beams when the beams are subjected to loads we have what we call as the deflection of the beam okay we have the slope of the beam in this chapter we have to do the determination of both we have to find out how much is the slope of a beam how much is the slope of the deflection curve of the beam under the given loading condition and how much is the deflection of the beam under the given loading condition because determination of both slope and deflection is very very important for us let me give you an example in the next class i may be showing you a video wherein uh, the beam supporting a bridge undergoes so much amount of the deflection that the bridge failure occurs and all the buses and all the people on the bridge they simply collapse into the water okay beneath them so there's understanding the deflection and the parameters of deflection and the slope are very very important let me give you an example of why the determination of deflection is very very important it's like say for example uh, let's 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 talk about a cantilever beam okay let's suppose we have a cantilever beam let's draw a cantilever beam cantilever beam we know it's fixed at one end and is uh, free at another end okay we have a cantilever beam which is fixed at one end and is free at another end a cantilever beam is like this okay now let's suppose there is some a person is walking on the cantilever beam okay so there is a person the person is walking on the cantilever beam and let's suppose the person is having some weight okay so as this person is walking on the cantilever beam so essentially it means the weight of the person which will be acting downwards m into g gravitational weight which is acting downwards that is actually a concentrated load acting on the beam and at different instants of time since this person is walking it means the weight on the beam is moving the load on the beam is a moving type of load okay now what happens as this much amount of load is applied on the beam the beam will undergo deflection okay so the deflection of the beam so the beam will undergo deflection and the deflected curve of the beam is essentially like this as we will see it for a cantilever beam the deflection curve is like this okay so it means we are assuming the person is walking on a straight beam but it's not he's not walking on a straight beam he's working walking on a trajectory okay he's walking on a curve and if the value of this so because under the load this beam will undergo deflection okay the beam will undergo deflection if the value of this deflection is very very large a very very large means very large value of deflection means that this point is not here this point is somewhere here okay this point is not here this point is somewhere here so large values of deflection mean this person will not be able to keep himself on the on the beam uh, but this person will simply roll down this beam okay this is the possibility that can happen when the values of the deflection are very very large and it does happen and it is also possible that the deflection values are too large that they cause so much strain in the beam okay that the beam breakage takes place that's often the case the breakage of the beam happens for large values of the deflection okay and that's possible that can be very catastrophic at times so understanding the slope and deflection of the beam is very important uh, for the design of the beam as well okay because we have to be very careful that the beam failure should not take place at all so we'll continue with it hopefully tomorrow thank you assalam alaikum